Podcast. We demystify what goes on behind the therapy room door. Join us on this voyage of discovery and co-creative conversations. This is The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors Podcast, with Bob Cook and Jackie Jones. Welcome to the next episode of The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors, with the wonderful Mr. Bob Cook and myself, Jackie Jones, which is all around forgiveness, self-forgiveness, forgiving ourselves in the therapy room. It's a big topic, forgiveness, isn't it, Bob? Yes, yeah, got many components to it. Yeah. Um, you know, learning to forgive other people as well as learning Absolutely. to forgive yourself. Um, they're big topics and very common in the therapy room. And according to which therapist you talk to, they might say um, forgiveness of yourself is um, the major curative factor. Yeah. I don't think it's as easy as that, though, but uh, that might be what they say. Um, but no, forgiveness is a massive subject here. Uh, what's your thoughts on it? Yeah, I think I've done a lot of work personally on self-forgiveness lately, um, and it has had a massive impact on me. But then I also see clients yeah. that are in you know, conflict with family members where the thought of forgiving the person is just too much for them. It's like letting them get away with something if you forgive them. Yeah, so let's start with forgiveness of the other. Yeah. Which is often called interpersonal forgiveness. If you've ever heard of that phrase. Um, yeah, it's forgiveness of the other. Um, under that might come um, forgiveness of... Um, things that have happened to you in the past at a traumatic level from the other person. Yeah. <clears throat> we all know, and your clients will know, and therapists will know, well, perhaps your clients won't know, but I think they were at some level. But how can I explain this to you? To hold on to the hatred, the anger, the resentment, the real rage at the other person, for whatever the wounding is that your client has received, is in essence unhealthy. Absolutely, yeah. Because it brings high stress levels. Yeah. It brings high anxiety often. It can bring acute depression and a feeling of helplessness and um, the opposite to powerfulness. Yeah. So we all know that, yet clients struggle. Often, as you've just said there, um, in this letting go, if you like, that's the best way to look at this. Yeah. Letting go of those negative thoughts, that rage, that anger, that fury, uh, that whole process is um, one people find hard to let go of. And so they're more likely to hang on to the negative thoughts, to hang on to the rage, to hang on to the grudges to hang on to the feelings of not being in power um, than they are to actually let go. Why? Well, yes, well, that cognitive reason you've just given there about perhaps letting people off the hook or whatever yeah. process you talk about. Um, secondly, the trauma they might have received is so deep that it's actually hard to get to to uh, help people heal. Um Another thing that it can be so painful, those uh, traumatic memories might be so locked away uh, that they're almost impossible to reach. Yeah. As well as the cognitive things people say to themselves, like you've just said there, um, I'm not going to let them get away with that, or some phrase which is that way round. But we all know that to let go of all this is the way forward absolutely yeah all the reasons i've just said yeah it can be quite triggering for some people you know if somebody says oh you see just let it go you know why are you holding on to grudges and all those sort of things it it can be quite triggering 
that it okay. kind of somehow minimizes the impact on them. Ah, uh, okay. Somehow it's a discount of the trauma that happened. Yeah. And hanging on to that pain kind of validates how much it hurt them. How much the trauma yeah. hurt them. Yeah, absolutely. Even though, you know, it sounds awful, but even though they survived the actual trauma and the, the initial pain of the trauma and the pain that they're expressing and feeling now is down to the thoughts about it all, mm. it's still really difficult for some people to, to move through that. Oh, I think of, for most people. Yeah. And the source of trauma, of course. Um, you can have very, very, very deep wounding huge traumatic experiences at one level to personal slice at another level. Yeah. So there's different levels of aspects of forgiveness we're talking about here. Um, and some people will say the educational part of what forgiveness does needs to come first in terms of by holding on to all the things we talked about earlier on, or I did, means that a person never moves forward yeah. they're all caught in the they're always staying in the past yeah like, yeah. A rabbit, like a rabbit caught in headlights and then they can't move on and they get trapped in their own powerless space um and like and, and things stop still or yeah. life stops still the i getting back to minimizing i don't see this is about minimizing at all I think this is about, I know clients might want to minimize it or therapists may want to minimize it. I don't know. They might even be in the process somehow of discounting. But I think for me, um, cure is going into the trauma. Yeah. Not, and certainly not minimize it, the opposite. No, I think other people minimize it. If you say, oh, I've forgiven them for what they've done, they kind of minimize the impact that that had on you because you've been oh. able to give them, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, if it was really bad, then you wouldn't have been able to do that. So it couldn't have been that bad in the first place. Well, hopefully a therapist would never go down that road. Absolutely not. No, no. I understand what you're saying. And maybe some very naive therapist or some sort of, oh, I can't even imagine it. But the, the counsellor or therapist who understands what, you know, forgiveness is all about at a therapeutic level would... um account for the level of trauma yeah would account for the pain would account for the difficulty people have in letting go of the rage the anger the negative trauma the feeling of shame etc cetera, etc cetera. however the cure is i believe going helping the client find a way to express or at least go into or at least maybe verbally or cognitively express the traumas we're talking about or the things they can't forgive. Yeah. To go into that. That's the where the healing is. You have to go into that process, help the person express if possible what is so untalkable about yeah which is it's like you say it's really deep stuff that so are you saying that they need to kind of go back to that place and acknowledge the feelings that they have about it you need to help them tell their story yeah and validate what oh, certainly to validate that story yeah, before, yeah and to help them understand it was never their fault even if they, um, in some ways, turn reality around to in some ways things are their fault. Yeah. You know, this isn't about uh, fault. This is about forgiveness. Yeah. Passion, in other words. So they need to find compassion of the self. Yeah. And that's, able... that's a big thing. I think a lot of people kind of miss that when we're talking about forgiveness is the compassion that goes along with that yeah oh if you can't it, <clears throat> it's a you know after telling their story 
and getting to a place where we can validate them, then we are really on the road to helping them find some compassion in themselves. Now, that is not an easy journey. No. Especially no. If people are attached to negative um, ways of looking at things or they're very hard on themselves. Yeah. Or they're not used to being kind to themselves. Or the trauma is so deep that compassion hasn't got in. Yes, yeah. Yeah, so there's many routes to go down, but it is important that we can help them develop a positive mindset, a positive way of reframing this whole process. Because unless they can find a positive mindset, then we're not going to find compassion. And if we can't find compassion, then they're more likely to revert back to negativity. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it, I always think of the, the process of forgiveness a bit like grief, that it's like stages, but it's not a linear process. It's not like we do this, 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 and this, and then that's it, everything's fine. I would imagine the deeper you go, you, do you know what I mean? The more likely you are to take a step back from it and then move forward and then back. And when you were saying about blame and things like that, to me, that's, like the bargaining part of grief you know if only I hadn't been there if I hadn't have gone to that place if I hadn't have said what I said it wouldn't have happened or whatever it is yeah you always find usually well 10 times out of 10 people are blaming themselves yeah or the the trauma um as their fault in some way yeah and so that's similar if we're talking about grief. Um, so we get to we need to get to a place where we can reframe this for them and help them have a positive mindset on the road to finding their compassion, <clears throat> their kindness in themselves, so they can um, heal. Yeah. And I think that's a really valid point because when we're talking about compassion and kindness and forgiveness, people often think we're talking about being compassion and kind to the other. Oh, <laughs> the no. That's done no. something or whatever, where the reality is, no, if we can, you know, be, be kind and compassionate to ourselves, then that puts us in a far more powerful position rather than being the victim, I think. Oh, if we can get to that place internally yeah well we find compassion and kindness to ourself anxiety will go down yeah you'll feel calmer yeah your heartbeat will decrease yeah your anxiety will reduce and you'll feel more healthy and what you have just said you'll feel more powerful yeah and hopefully a byproduct of this would be maybe you can maybe and i'm not saying this is the goal of therapy but maybe it's something to explore um you're more easy from that place to be able to let go i'm not saying you necessarily forgive the other but it could be explored that yeah, yeah. um and certainly you're more in a place to be able to let go of all the things that have held you back like the hatred like the anger like the acute sadness like grudges like whatever ways we want to look at that you're more likely from that place to be able to do that and maybe even to move forward in the process of forgiveness forgiveness of the other but you won't do it from a place of uh not having compassion for yourself you, no. you have to get there first to be able to show compassion to others absolutely so that's the positive of this journey for me do you know what I mean being able to see the world through a more <laughs> positive lens or being more open to gratitude and kindness and even have a better self-image of yourself and trusting the world a little bit more do you know I think sometimes when we've experienced trauma that we 
generalize everything that you know a lot of the time we're in fight and flight mode and the world is a dangerous place and something's going to go wrong and all that negative self-talk that we can have mm. and yeah. along with that I know you spoke about you know your, your heart rate increasing and everything but it's bad for our health if we hang on to to pain and hurt it impacts our physical health as well as our mental health absolutely it's yeah. like a double whammy. Not only have we got the initial trauma, but we've got the ongoing impact of that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So it's it's how we can let go yeah. of the pain that we inflict on ourselves through, through this. So the first step, well, depending which order, I, I, like you, maybe this isn't linear, um, it'd be depending on the client, I think. The first step, though, is help them tell their story. Yeah. What is so traumatic that they can't forgive? Yeah. Now, that that is the first step. Maybe there's a step before that, though, actually thinking about this. And that's making sure we establish safety in the therapeutic room. Because for them to tell their story... Several conditions have to be in place. Yes. Number one, they have to trust the therapist. In Absolutely. The yeah. The therapist is not going to belittle them, uh, repeat history in some way. That the therapist is going to be there for them. That the therapist is dependable. So they need to trust the therapist. So this isn't something that happens immediately in therapy because they have to trust the therapist first. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> which is a really important thing to think about because I think this stage that we're talking about around forgiveness, letting go, is later on in therapy because you have to, to trust the therapist and you also have to have a safe place to be able to tell your story. And when I say a safe space, I don't mean just physically. Yeah. In terms of the doors shut and it's a safe environment and it's a nurturing environment. But I also mean feeling safe within yourself. Now, I think you only feel safe within yourself to tell a certain story. And that is usually dependent on the saved object. In other words, a safe other person. And if this other person is safe for you or you trust them, yeah. you're more able to start talking about what's so unforgiving for you, whether it's about the other person or about yourself. Yes. But I think safety, trust, a working relationship with a therapist of the prerequisites for this process. Yeah. And just, just <laughs> having that non judgmental person, you know, often our nearest and dearest will know if we've been through something. So they're already biased in one way or another. Mm. No, well, this has to be with the professional. Yeah. Yeah. And those prerequisites have to be in place, I think. Absolutely. So that, that's that. Next step, some therapists might say, educational part of what happens if you don't let go and you don't uh, move where we're talking about in terms of the search for compassion. I'm not sure about that. For me, I think the first step is really helping the person tell their story of what's so traumatic for them in the world of forgiving other people or themselves. That's, that, to me, is the step after, you know, uh, a trusting relationship, safety. Then we move to helping the person talk about their story, which is so deeply difficult for them about forgiving themselves or other people. And then after that... We need to um, really help them reframe usually um, their negative construction of anger, fury. When I say frame, I better step back a bit. I don't mean um, uh, cognitive reframing. I mean how. I mean uh, first. Uh, okay. I mean an attunement and accounting for their story in depth. But I, I really then mean, need 
to help them move away from a negative frame to a positive mindset. Because if they stay stuck in a negative mindset, that means they're not letting go. Yeah. Or anywhere near letting go. Yeah. So I would be thinking and talking to the client and saying, okay, so this is what's so terrible for you. And really account for what happened to them and their story, what needs healing. And I want to find out through phenomenological inquiry what needs to happen for you to be able to let go of the negative dark side that we're talking about here. Yeah. So I'd need to find that out. And once we've got to that place, so the other person says, oh, well, I can't think of anything. I can't think of anything at all. I hate that person so much. They did X, 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 and X, and I'm never, ever going to forgive them. So the therapist then needs to say something. I repeat back to them. Are you saying to me that you're never going to let go of any of this pain and hurt to yourself that you're giving yourself for the rest of your life and even perhaps after death. Yeah. So yeah. in other words, you're, I was, TA times you'll be stoking the impasse. In other words, if you say that clearly back to the person like that, it's rare, by the way, that they'll come back and say, yes, that's what I mean. Yeah, Usually, yeah. they say something like, well, when you put it like that, I don't think so. Or something. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. It is. It's when you put it like that, when you kind of hit them in the face with the reality of what they're actually saying. Yeah. And then we can go into, well, what needs to happen then? Yeah. Just to change this picture a little bit. What what needs to happen? And then so you don't give up when they first say X X X X. Yeah. You if you have to, you reframe it, you repeat back, you reflect back, any of those things. And you keep on to you can get some movement, perhaps, to some positive mindset around letting go. Yeah. I like but, the way you're kind of talking about the, the two sides to it and one side being the dark side, because <laughs> that's kind of how I see it when we're stuck in, you know, that place of not being able to forgive. It's not mm. a nice place for us. It's it's not it's not a good place to be in when we can't be compassionate or kind to ourselves because of the grief or the trauma or whatever it is. The other mm. side of it, having that positive, you know, mindset and you know, I don't know, looking at life differently feels a lot lighter to me. It's a lot lighter and it may take a long time to get there. Yeah. But yeah. it is a lot lighter. However, depending on the level of trauma, it might take a light year to get there. Yeah, yeah. And some people might never fully be able yeah. to. Like, ah, that, that's yeah. a really important point. Yeah, what you're talking about here. They may not every, <laughs> they might not be able to fully forgive. And it's really important, really, really important the therapist doesn't somehow buy into shame at this point you know in terms of somehow the client feels shamed if they can't get there you know if they can't get there they can't get there but they might get to a place where they are able to um shift some of their thinking or yeah frame things slightly or um let go of some aspects so they can feel slightly better if you like um and sometimes things can be so horrific there may not be full forgiveness it's really really important the therapist doesn't buy into any i'm not okay sorry you're not okay position about this and they need to honor them for what they have achieved not yeah. what they haven't achieved yeah absolutely yeah see i don't see full full forgiveness 
as the major therapeutic goal in the world of what we're talking about here. It might be in my head, sorry. Sorry, it could be in my head, <laughs> but it certainly won't be explicitly said. Yes, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. people can only do what they can do. Absolutely, yeah. And if, for me, there's a lot of, I don't know, the way that we feel about forgiveness and letting go and what that represents for us. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I, I for me, my mum can't half hold on to a grudge. I was brought up with somebody that didn't let anything go. She's got memory like a bloody elephant. Do you know what I mean? So it's our thoughts about what forgiveness actually means that can be different for some people. Mm. And we get. If I forgive somebody, does that mean that I have to forget what happened? Yeah, forgiveness is not about forgetting. No. No, that is it's the opposite. Actually, it's about going into the experience, validating the experience. It's not about forgetting at all. Uh -huh. That's a misnomer. But people understand forgiveness in different ways. You, you know, so oh, I, well, I, I probably wouldn't even, I don't know whether I'd bring that word into a therapy session. Maybe I would explore what forgiveness means for them. Mm. Because I think we all have a different way of looking at what it actually is. Yeah, yeah, but you're correct. If we go to what I would call interpersonal forgiveness, which is forgiveness of the other, the major tool for that, actually, I think, is empathy. Yeah. So if somehow the client, and it's usually through compassion of the self, can find some empathy to the other, they're more likely to move towards interpersonal forgiveness. But they have to find that empathy. Interestingly enough, you in transaction analysis terms you might in this process i'll say this is a process not an event often through parent interviews when you're talking to the parent if it's to do with the parent this is or could yeah. be in a or whatever it is and you get to the child in the parent that's the younger kid in the parent the vulnerable part of the parent that might bring empathy in in other words for the client who is getting some empathy about where the other person was coming from. But the first step anyway in all this is empathy for the self and compassion for self and kindness for the self. And then maybe from that position, there might be some pathic for the wounding of the other. Yeah. I would imagine that's quite a way down the road with it, though. Oh, that's why, that's why I didn't include that in my yeah. numerals. And it doesn't even have to happen, but actually uh, it may happen. I think that's true healing when we can do that with the other. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, it's in my experience, um, it's, I want to say it's unusual, but it's far down the line, as you've just said, because you have to find the peace in yourself first to often do that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. If it's something to do with yourself that you can't forgive yourself, in some ways that is a bit easier, though it may not sound like that to you. I don't know. But because um, I think people find it, though it might be very, very painful, um, we can get to the places where they feel they're at fault or they've done something wrong. And we can help them understand through validation and yeah uh, what's really going on so that i think that's always a little bit easier if we're talking about forgiving other the other for something quite horrific then we have another story on our hands yeah yeah absolutely mm. it's a really complex issue it, it, you know the, the different layers to forgiveness and like you say going from that dark place into a a lighter place and learning to to look more positive at things because it's really easy to as a protective mechanism to go to the negative <laughs> yeah and it's like going down the layers of an onion yeah yeah absolutely it's certainly a process never an event yes and forgiveness is often 
maybe you know if you you're in a two year treatment with somebody or even a year's treatment with someone um forgiveness is down the line um you know as you've said at the beginning or I think I probably said at the beginning we have to have trust in our therapist we have to have a safe place we have to you know be validated to talk about our our journey and what's happened and how we feel and how we think uh even before we get to finding kindness and compassion in ourselves yeah and then we might look outwards to um interpersonal forgiveness yeah so it, it it's complex it takes some time it doesn't have to be complete forgiveness though some therapists might argue with me here i think um i'm okay going to where the person can go to and usually if we can go to where the person can go to so they're not overwhelming themselves we can come back later at another date perhaps 10 therapy sessions down the wow. line or whatever it is and maybe go to another layer yeah why is a process never an event here yeah yeah but i do know the keeping on to pain, keeping on to grudges, keeping on to that destructive, negative way of hurting ourselves, really, because that's, that's what it is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, is, a, it, 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 it's, it's, it's a very hard road to be down. Yeah, it's not. But there's something for me as well about when we we forgive, we kind of take back the power yeah definitely I see you know being stuck in that negative place is kind of giving over control mm. of my headspace somehow I don't know no forgiving is really really a very powerful yeah transaction or I process some people see forgiveness as a weakness do you know what I mean whereas oh, for me oh. it's completely the opposite it's yeah, it's taking back your power. Yeah. And, oh, and absolutely yeah. taking back your power for yourself internally and in the interpersonal forgiveness, taking back the power with regards to the other person. Yeah. Because unless we find a way to do that, they all, always will have the power to really hurt us and cause pain and everything yeah. else that goes with that. And, you know, it's about whatever the event was. It doesn't define who you are as a person. You know, there's much more to us than whatever that event was. Yeah, and it may take a very long time to get there according to the severity of what we're talking about. Absolutely, yeah. Because some things are very hard. I was thinking, you hear, hear on the television these murders or these extreme traumatic events and i was thinking of one particularly 25 years ago uh, i think it was called the soham murders where two young two girls, girls were called, yeah yeah well, both had manchester united shirts on and yeah. they were called by the caretaker of the school and um that's quite a famous case so we're talking about i'm talking i picked an extreme case i know that uh there was two sets of parents and uh I was listening to a documentary, oh, I don't know how, how long ago, and um, the one set of parents could never forgive, never. They were locked into pain, grief, and yeah. well, everything else. And the other parents were seemed to having a better time of it. Now, can, it, can somebody ever, ever, in these extreme circumstances, um, fully forgive? I don't know, but I tell you what, it's a quite a long road because they will have got they will have gone to many dark places, and usually blame themselves. Yeah, there's something done, when you, all, all the things you said earlier on. Yeah, but when you were talking then about the the Soham case, there's something that I don't know whether they still do it or not that they introduced a few years ago where. You know, people who were victim of a crime could meet up with the perpetrator of the crime yeah, in like yeah. a mediation situation. Yeah, in, hope it, in, in a hope to eventually get some interpersonal forgiveness. Yeah, yeah. So people, they don't sort of, you know, stay in the world of un understanding and the world of 
pain, rage, fury, and all these other things, they can let go. And um, you're right, that was introduced. And I don't know how often that actually happens. No, no, me neither. Or the severity of the actual crime, I don't know. Yeah. But it takes a certain type of person, I think, to to forgive the perpetrator. But that extreme. But it's freeing and it's taking back the power. That's the bit that always sticks with me. Yeah. I couldn't couldn't agree more. And that's why I said there's continuums of trauma, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. Now it may not feel like that, perhaps to the people in it. And I'm not saying as a therapist. Uh, we we say that those sorts of statements, but no. because we need to honour all trauma. Um, yeah. It's a long road, I think, for many people, but it needs a therapist who will stick at it, who's dependable. Yeah. And if they can help the client free themselves from some of these negative thoughts and move to a more positive mindset, they may be able to help them release themselves from their tortured prison. Yeah. Because that's what it will, that's what it often is. Yeah. Absolutely. Another good podcast, Bob. So certainly, certainly a deep subject. De- definitely. And I think it deserves to be because like you said, it's it's on lots of layers, you know, and to know that we don't need to tackle it all in one go, that we can you know, leave it and go back to it. It's it's taking it at the client's own pace, really. Yeah, and we haven't even in this podcast talked about the therapist's counter transfers mm. towards the whole dimension of forgiveness. Maybe for another podcast. Definitely. So until next time, Bob, when we'll be talking about how many are there in the therapy process? Oh, gosh. Look forward to that. Okie doke, until next time. Bye bye. Bye. You've been listening to The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. We'll be back next week with another episode.